This has been a rash of DMCA takedown orders filed against reality accepting video makers lately. Those who have fallen victim to such antics are not always sure what to do about it. Those who behave by using such tactics always make excuses for why they think it is acceptable. Copyright law is fairly extensive and is designed to protect copyright holders from copyright infringement. However, misusing the law is breaking the law and severe penalties are often the result. Pseudoscience antisocial jerks do not see this. They use the DMCA as a weapon in their censorship arsenal and this is what I want to address in this video. In the case of a YouTube video, the owner of the copyright is obviously the maker of the video. There are some exceptions to this, especially if the user in question uses video materials that he or she either doesn't own the copyright to or doesn't have the right to distribute. Creationists use this fact to claim that they have the right not to have portions of their videos used by other people. Examples are as follows. And so I thought to myself, I thought, okay, I will contact those people. In fact, I'll try to get that video removed, the video where I'm involved, where they don't have my permission. Because I created the video, they didn't have permission to get that video from me. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll, ha I'll have their video removed where I'm involved because it invades my privacy and it's harassment towards me. However, these are not valid reasons for submitting a copyright infringement claim. Copyright infringement claims are intended to protect the right to copy and distribute the products in question and are not intended to censor nor are they intended to silence criticism. The relevant YouTube terms of service covering copyright in respect of the point of this video are as follows. 10.1 when you upload or post a user submission to YouTube, you grant a to YouTube a worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free, transferable license with the right to sublicense to use, reproduce, distribute, prepare derivative works of, display and perform that user submission in connection with the provision of the services and otherwise in connection with the provision of the website and YouTube's business, including without limitation for promoting and redistributing part or all of the website and derivative works thereof in any media formats and through any media channels. And b to each user of the website, a worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free license to access your user submissions through the website and to use, reproduce, distribute, prepare derivative works of, display and perform such user submissions to the extent permitted by the functionality of the website and under these terms. Under these guidelines, each user on YouTube has the right to access and reproduce the content of the YouTube service as set out in the provisions as long as they do so on YouTube and in accordance with the community guidelines. It is arguable that a user under these terms of service is not permitted to download a video and use it for the purposes of creating derivative works or for any specific purpose since doing so is not specifically granted by the YouTube user guidelines. However, even these guidelines in the YouTube user terms of service are subject to fair use. Under Title 17, 512 G and F of the US Copyright Act, you have the right to use and redistribute as part of your work any copyrighted material you come across for the purposes of comment and criticism. This is also covered under Chapter 48 Part 1 Section 79.4A of the UK Copyright Designs and Patents Act of 1988, also known as Fair Dealing. In plain English, when you are commenting on or giving criticism to anything you come across online, you are covered legally under the provisions of fair use. With respect to mirroring other people's videos on another YouTube channel, copyright law becomes a bit more fuzzy. Some users choose to interpret the previously stated YouTube terms of service to mean that they have been granted the right to reproduce the works in full. However, under a strict interpretation of copyright law, they do not have this right. The clause is set out and each user is granted a license to copy and distribute etc. within the functionality of the site. Of course, it can be argued that the contents of each video given are downloaded to the computer of each user as it is being watched and simply accessing the contents of the relevant file is not an infringement of copyright under these terms. It can also be argued that any user mirroring a video is doing so in order to allow comment and criticism on a video that otherwise is being censored. This is a laudable goal, to be sure, but is not specifically within the letter of the law to use fair use clauses in this manner. Some users have begun instead to add their own commentary to the video submissions in question. 
Adding their own commentary and criticism to a video can also be considered to be a means of ensuring that you are covered under fair use. This is a good place to start, however there are certain YouTube users who seem to think that the mechanism used to deliver these comments is important when deciding if a video meets fair use. It is not. No matter if the video itself is encoded with commentary or criticisms, or if the video has overlaid annotations using Adobe Flash, the user who mirrored the video is still commenting on and providing criticism to the video in question and therefore can be considered to be covered under fair use. How about the length of the material used? Can you use the whole video? This is an area of the law that no matter what a YouTube user who isn't actually an intellectual property lawyer will tell you, is not a clear-cut matter of don't do it. There are precedents for other laws in the legal system, and copyright law is itself an example of precedents being set out for provision of freedom of comment and criticism. The fair use clauses in copyright laws are themselves examples of additions to the law to allow for people's rights to express their own opinions and responses to published materials, and is specifically included to do so as to allow these people their rights to correct misinformation, for example. Throwing around insults and pointing someone to a site called andrewlawyer.com where it says don't copy the whole video is not a valid legal argument for censorship. A site with the very name andrewlawyer.com is not a valid legal advice site where one should go to find out the rule of law with respect to their own copyright claims. Just because it says on such a site not to copy a whole video does not mean that this is a specific law set in stone. Copyright law is far more complex than that, and each case is very specific. This is why intellectual property lawyers exist, because the law is open to interpretation and because the law can be changed when copyright is misused, as is so often the case by anti-science, anti-social, intellectually bankrupt creationists. There is also the issue of whether such alleged copyright infringement actually causes damage to the copyright holder financially. Arguably, if it does not, then copyright is somewhat pointless. This is not to say that if someone posts material for free, they lose the right to prevent someone else from selling that material for a fee. Indeed, cases of this have happened in the past, and copyright is intended to protect such people from becoming a victim of such malpractice. But if the purpose of reposting a YouTube video on a mirror on a YouTube site is to allow comment and criticism of the original author, then should copyright law be abused to silence one's critics? This is my opinion and should be treated as such, but my answer is, no, it shouldn't. My advice is as follows for anyone wanting to mirror videos of censoring creationists. Don't mirror the entire video. Clip out irrelevant portions of it, such as any introductory statements or repetitious arguments. Add your own commentary, preferably by breaking the video apart. And if you are unsure if your mirror breaks copyright, get in touch with an intellectual property lawyer and clarify if your submission of a mirror video is in fact covered under fair use. If your mirror submission is DMCA'd, then contact the League of Reason and the DMCA Abuse channel on YouTube and explain your case. You will get some advice as to whether or not your video is covered under fair use. One piece of advice I will give regarding mirroring videos for fair use is this. Create a trailer version of the video instead and point a link to the original. That way, your users can go see the original and then they can come back to your trailer and leave their comments there. This is within the law and is covered under fair use clauses as I've stated before. If in doubt, consult a legal professional.